morning, friends, and welcome to After GMS live on the WFMY News 2 Facebook page right now. I see several of you are already joining us. Some of our regulars on here. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Joe. <laughs> welcome. I'm Megan Malera is here with Ben Briscoe, who's filling in today, and Terran Kirksey. Uh, you know, it's a pretty good morning so far out uh, here in the weather garden. I did have to go ahead and uh, grab the spot. Yeah, I was about to comment on that. <laughs> I don't like seeing that because it was so beautiful yesterday, Taran. I know. And now you're wearing a scarf. I know. I know. I, I had to. I had to. It just <laughs> got too cold. <laughs> and I bet the umbrella's on standby, too. Oh, you know it. It's right there <laughs> uh, in the door. I'm good this morning, though, and you're going to be fine this morning as well. You're not going to need the umbrella. Um, at all, but as we go through the middle of the day for the western part of our uh, viewing area and then the afternoon for everybody else, that's when the rain's really going to start to move in. I think our temperatures are going to remain fairly steady the rest of the day, mid 40s for most of us, upper 40s if you're lucky, low 40s if you're not so lucky. There's just going to kind of be a, a range of about nine degrees across the entire Piedmont. As far as temperatures are concerned, the rain will continue overnight. As far as the weekend is concerned, and I really want to emphasize this, it is not going to be a washout. There will be very large stretches of time that are completely dry. I have some week some outdoor plans this weekend. I'm not going to cancel them, but I also have contingency plans in place if I need to head inside or something like that. So just keep the umbrella handy through the weekend. I think uh, most of Saturday probably on the dry side. Temperatures aren't going to be bad either. Uh, mid 50s probably on Saturday on Sunday I have 63 right there. I might change that by noon. I think that there's a possibility we could get a uh, warmer than that, but we'll see. I'll look at some more data before I make that decision. Um, and then as we go into Monday, I think the rain chance does go up a little bit more as the cold front uh, approaches, but still doesn't look like it's going to clear us out completely though. We could have a kind of up and down chances of a few showers as we go through uh, the middle of next week. Still a lot of uncertainty really once we get past Monday. So you could see some uh, wild changes in the forecast over the next few days um, for the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time frame. That's a quick look at your seven day forecast. Oh, Taran keeps talking about these weekend plans, but I don't have an invite yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What, what are you doing, Taran, exactly? <laughs> oh, well, we, we, there's a restaurant that we like. Uh, we plan on eating outside. So if we can't eat outside, then we'll just uh, take the food to go and uh, go inside. Well, yeah. it's okay. You can bring us a dog and <laughs> bag on Monday. Uh -huh. I will yeah. keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ben, we know there are a lot of sports plans this weekend, especially as some of those stadium restrictions ease with the new guidelines taking effect tonight at five. Yeah, a and is actually going to have fans in the stands for a game mm -hmm. tomorrow. And tournaments and teams making plans to allow the fans back in all over as Governor Roy Cooper eases those COVID-19 restrictions. Like capacities at indoor venues. We want to hear from you. Will you be buying tickets to things like indoor sports games or a show in the near future? While you comment on the feed, here are a few opinions from Good Morning Show viewers earlier. Sandra says, I will not be attending any events because COVID-19 is still out there. Matthew says, Heck yeah, go Heels. Can't <laughs> wait to get back to normal. What better way than with a few basketball games? What do you guys think? Is this something that you would want to do? You know, uh, uh, outside, yes. I am all for going to an outdoor type game. I'm excited about the prospect of possibly going to a Greensboro Grasshoppers game again this spring. I've already noticed the college baseball teams are practicing. I'm a little bit leery about indoor sporting events. I know the mask requirement is still in effect, but you have fans who are, you know, yelling because they're excited and they're screaming and obviously there are going to be distancing measures in place. But for me, I think I'm a little more cautious than maybe the average person because I have a little one at home who's not old enough to wear a mask yet and you know I'm working back in my workplace now and when we're on air, obviously we're distanced but not able to wear masks and so it might take a little bit for me to go to an indoor sporting event, but I'm glad that people have the option to go and there are these safeguards in place. You know, it's interesting you brought up the cheering and yelling because uh -huh. a lot of the places are trying to figure out do they require the double masking now. Okay. Um, and there has been some studies that have shown that that can help a little bit with the cheering and the yelling, but I know a lot of people are still kind of uneasy about all this. Yeah, yeah. Terrain Kirksey, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I totally uh, agree with you uh, on, on all those points. You know, it's definitely a good thing that we're even at the point now that 
these things can be considered. You know, the folks that are experts in infectious diseases have looked at the trends and said, okay, well, things are trending in the right direction. Uh, we can start loosening up some of these uh, restrictions. But at the end of the day, you have to go with what you're comfortable with. Yep. Some folks are going to be comfortable going, you know, as soon as uh, things open up. Other folks, uh, kind of like me, uh, probably going to shy away from that, at least at first, at least until, you know, I get vaccinated and, and also until the trends go down a little bit more. Kind of in my mind, I need a combination of both of those before I start to feel uh, even more comfortable. But, but again, you know, it's a personal responsibility and a personal choice um, mm -hmm. as we move forward. So if you're comfortable with it, by all means, hey, get in there and have a good time. <laughs> but yeah. as far as yeah. I'm concerned, I'm probably going to wait a little bit more on that. For yeah. me, there's this hard internal tug of war yeah. because part of you wants to be super, super cautious and safe. And the other part of you wants to support our economy and yeah. help people have jobs and get them back to work. Right. So I've decided to sort of walk the line of if the governor and Mandy Cohen say it's safe, mm -hmm. then I'm going to feel comfortable doing that and mm -hmm. put my mind at ease. And yeah. so at five o'clock today, a little bit is changing there for me. Yeah. And I feel like that's the only way that I've been able to stay sane throughout all of this. Yeah, but uh, Mandy Cohen, Dr. Cohen and the governor have been careful to emphasize that while we are seeing this improvement in the data, COVID is still out yep. there and we need to take seriously the social distancing and the mask mandate in order for this to work because the last thing anybody wants is for these businesses to have to reverse course and suffer more of the impacts. And of course, the ultimate low would be more people getting sick and severely hospitalized with COVID-19, which we don't want to happen. So if we can stay the trajectory, everybody continue following the rules, no matter how inconvenient they are for the next few months, and hopefully more things and more businesses can continue reopening. We heard from a lot of our fans, our friends on here who uh, are excited about the prospect of going to sporting games. Joe said maybe she'll be able to go to a Panthers game <laughs> this year. That would be so nice. And then we heard from a couple others. Teresa can't wait to go to a concert. Nadine Frank, saying she mm -hmm. feels more comfortable now that she's had the vaccine. That's a good point. I feel like that's a lot of people too who are mm -hmm. itching to get back out there and do some of this stuff now that they've been vaccinated, but still yeah. carefully, still with a mask, still social distancing. Yeah, Nadine wants to go to a Hurricanes game. That would be <laughs> super fun. <laughs> Terrain Kirksey, anything in particular you would want to do at, if, once you feel like you're comfortable doing it? Um, well, you know, it would be nice to uh, go to more concerts uh, mm. again. My wife and I really enjoy uh, doing that. Um, also more indoor dining, um, which, you know, we've started easing into regardless uh, as things start open up, you know, we usually go during off times, but, but nonetheless, um, but it would be nice to have the opportunity to go to uh, some of these uh, indoor sporting events as mm -hmm. well. I've have not been to a uh, college basketball, well, actually that's not true, I've been to one <laughs> college basketball game since I've been here in North Carolina and I, last year had planned to go to more but you know obviously uh things uh, didn't go uh well as far as uh the spread of of COVID. so you know hopefully uh moving forward there can be more planning to to go to some more uh you know college basketball games and other uh, indoor sporting events like that dude right on college basketball is one of the best things about living in north oh, carolina yeah. <laughs> so definitely take advantage of that oh yeah definitely i went to a unc game and i was like all right now i have to go to a duke basketball game and i have to get to a uncg basketball game <laughs> and just so much good game. basketball across the entire state so uh definitely looking forward to uh maybe uh checking out some more basketball games uh, in the future yeah i got some app state fans here as well <laughs> cheering on those teams throughout this sporting season ahead. Ben Briscoe, you mentioned the Patti LaBelle concert you were hoping happened. Yeah, so <laughs> I bought tickets for this at the beginning of last year. It was in March and then it was in August and now it's rescheduled for May. Uh, I'm curious if that's going to happen. It gave us the option of refunding your ticket now or waiting it out. Okay. I think we're going to wait it out. We're big Patti you, fans in our house. You're going to want to wait it out. Yeah. I went, I've been to a Patti LaBelle concert. It's excellent, so <laughs> wait, wait it out. She still has the, the, the same energy <laughs> and the same uh, 
sass in a good way. <laughs> it might that be, be a good thing thing that we have to wear masks in this because it will kind of mute my singing for everyone else. <laughs> That'll help everyone. <laughs> well, you can't compete with Patty, I mean, regardless. So <laughs> nobody can get there. <laughs> yeah, we are all looking forward to a post pandemic mm -hmm. world. Hopefully, with everybody's collective efforts, we can get there sooner rather than later. In the meantime, of course, we are still thinking about the families who are affected mm -hmm. by this every day and our frontline healthcare workers who are treating COVID patients. Absolutely. All right, we'll get to our next conversation coming up. We think you're going to like this one, but right now we have to cover some of our morning headlines. Tonight, as we've been alluding to, the governor is lifting the stay at home order and easing some COVID restrictions on businesses as we continue watching COVID metrics stabilize. The statewide 10 p.m. curfew will expire, but alcohol sales will still end at 11 each night. The mask mandate will remain in effect through at least the end of next month. This new order takes effect tonight at 5. It also allows businesses to serve more customers. Restaurants can operate at up to 50% capacity, while bars can serve customers indoors at 30% capacity. Indoor entertainment venues can also open and run at 30% capacity, up to 250 people, whichever is less. Guilford County teachers are getting their first dose of the COVID vaccine. They started yesterday and will continue through tomorrow. The same Thursday through Saturday vaccine schedule will continue next week. The county aims to vaccinate 10,000 teachers in two weeks. What an undertaking there. To keep things on track in the classroom, students had a remote learning day today. Now, Cone Health announced its plans to close its dedicated COVID-19 hospital. This is the one at the Green Valley campus. As of midnight, Cone Health is treating 87 COVID patients, a number that has been dropping since it hit its peak of more than 260 back in January. Statewide hospitalizations are down as well. Starting next month, if someone is hospitalized with COVID-19, they can be admitted at any Cone Health Hospital. They will be placed in special COVID units and treated by teams trained to handle the virus. It is Excuse me, 756 right now as Black History Month is coming to a close. The Greensboro History Museum is encouraging everyone to celebrate black history and culture year round. WFMI to Sue's Candace Red takes a closer look at the museum's efforts to do that. The Greensboro History Museum is celebrating black history and culture year round with free online programs and exhibitions. The museum has an exhibition titled Pieces of Now, murals, masks, community stories, and conversations. Right now, you're looking at the free virtual experience, but it's also available for in-person viewing. It features more than 20 pieces of street art created as part of the summer's Black Lives Matter protest, along with photos, objects, and video interviews with local artists and organizers. The public is invited to share experiences, stories, and objects related to the protest, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and economic crisis. The museum is also offering a free webinar series that explores the topic of police, community, and justice, as well as the role of school resource officers, where Carol Hart is the museum director. She says the public is also invited to a program today titled History Lunch Break. Take a listen. We're going to be talking with James Stewart, who's a librarian at a and and he's going to talk about Aggie veterans of the Great War. And that Great War was World War I. So we're really looking forward to that. He'll talk about people like David Cherry and decorated war hero Robert L. Campbell. Once again, the museum is encouraging everyone to celebrate black history and culture year round. Taking a look at your screen as I give you more details. Here's the information for the History Lunch Break program. It will be held today at noon on Zoom and on the museum's Facebook page. Remember, despite the pandemic, the museum is still welcoming guests for free in-person tours under strict health and safety guidelines. You also have the option to participate participate in free virtual tours online. For more information, all you have to do is visit our website. That's WFMYNews2.com. Well, it is my favorite time of week here on After GMS. Time to sit back, relax, and just reflect on life's many blessings. It is a good time to reset and refocus amid all that is going on in life. I asked you on my Facebook page, Mega Malaris News, to tell me something good, big or small, that happened in your life recently. 
Alicia took her mom to Chapel Hill for her two-year checkup after receiving a new kidney and liver. She got an excellent report and said God is so amazing. Lois got to have lunch with her two sisters she has not seen in months. Angie's baby boy was born last week. His name is Spencer. Heather got her downstairs heater fixed after suffering through the cold temperatures during the ice storms. Bonnie had an in-person visit with her mom who's in assisted living. She hadn't been able to see her for a while due to COVID restrictions. Yvonne got her car fixed and it didn't cost an arm and a leg. Daryl's gorgeous flowers bloomed yesterday. Norma got to meet her great granddaughter Sunday and said she's a doll. Anita's two family members recovered from COVID answers to their prayers. Gia got her first COVID shot and as someone who's immunocompromised, she felt it was a true blessing. Carolyn decorated her mantle for spring and Beth said the weather was beautiful. Oh, I love reading these comments every mm -hmm. week. There are more than I have time to even put in that segment. That is how those of you at home are reflecting on your blessings and sharing them with us. It's really a testament to how you are finding grace and joy in the little things during times like these, which I think has carried a lot of us through this so year. So important. Mm -hmm, that sense of positivity. Uh, my little thing I'm finding joy in right now is coffee. I'm not used <laughs> to being up for the morning show with you guys. Uh, and I've gone through now, this is my seventh cup of the morning. Seven. I know it's a problem, okay? Okay, well I those cups it. are pretty small. I, it's a <laughs> tiny cup, tiny. especially because I'm 6'4". This is like a little <laughs> thimble, okay? It is, a, uh, it is a small cup. But between the coffee and your happy personalities and laughter, it's been a great morning and I appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you at home too for helping me through it today. Your energy is contagious, Ben. You Aww, are welcome you. back anytime. It's, I it's fun that. having you. <laughs> Terrain Kirksey, tell me something good. The weather. How did I for know? now <laughs> for now yeah uh, the last couple of days have been excellent you know I hope you got a chance to to sit outside and just spend some time outside the past few days but what you're gonna notice as we go through the next few weeks you know you'll start having okay one day with temperatures in the 60s and low 70s oh it's two in a row three in a row and then it will just keep rolling on like that we are headed towards <laughs> springtime and next thing you know it's going to be uh, 90 degrees and humid and you're going to be wishing for uh, temperatures like this so <laughs> you know just take it as it comes um, I'm not seeing any big time Arctic blast around here uh, <laughs> anytime in the, the short term. Just kind of regular uh, late February, early March uh, chill. So, yeah, you know, I really enjoyed the weather. It was just nice to sit outside and just have that quiet time to think and reflect you know, over the past few days. Absolutely. I, I attest to that. Just being able to get outside, not having to bundle up to go for a long mm. walk. Also, mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier on the Good Morning Show, the days are getting longer. The sunset is later. So for those of us, you know, who have to go to bed so early <laughs> for the Good Morning Show, it's nice to feel like you have a little bit more of your evening with your family to enjoy outside before it gets dark outside. I, I will tell you, our poor mm. dog is like, please, I cannot walk anymore. <laughs> My paws hurt. Don't oh, make no. me go out there again. Because we've been trying to take advantage of this yeah. every moment that we could because we knew well, this week, you know, it's going to be rain. <laughs> yeah, hey, we are spoiled, though. It's late February, so yeah. if we can get even just a couple of those days like we did this past week, it's, it's a good week in my book. Nadine said she got through the second COVID vaccine last Friday. It was rough, but she's finally feeling better. That's her. Tell me something good. Joe said she almost hit a deer the other night, but did not. That is definitely something good. Glad you are safe, Joe. Joe, then, buy you some deer whistles. Yeah. They work. Do for they the work? Car. They do. I grew up okay. in the country in Texas, <laughs> and I don't have scientific proof on this, but I have <laughs> seen deer run away when I've been driving up with them. Okay. I believe in deer whistles. Okay. I mean, it can't hurt if you're going to try it. I guess. It's like 10 bucks. It's worth it. <laughs> we heard from Bobby who said, I think this correlates with the first conversation we had too, but it's also a tell me something good. He's going to see Elton John at the Tanger Center mm. next year. That sounds right. fun. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I can't wait to see shows at the Tanger Center. Obviously, that has been one of the biggest disappointments business wise for Greensboro during this whole pandemic. You had this big, beautiful facility ready to open its inaugural year. All these amazing Broadway style performances canceled due to COVID-19 or put on pause, we should say. So to be able to see that getting going again, hopefully in the next few months will be an amazing treat for those of us who love theater. But how cool that we get to come into this new post COVID era with such a new thing in our city. Yeah, it really will transform us. I feel like and mm -hmm. help solidify that we've made it through. 
I, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Any reminder of perseverance in times like these is a positive. All right, let's get a final check of our forecast. Turan, you said don't cancel the outdoor plans, but keep that umbrella handy. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, now today you might want to. <laughs> We're going to see a lot of rain uh, this afternoon, I do believe. Temperature is very chilly, but as far as the weekend is concerned, there will be long stretches of time where things are dry, and I don't think the temperatures are going to be that bad either. For now, I'm going to put temperatures in the mid-50s on Saturday. Sunday has a lot of upside, okay? So I have a temperature of 63 and a 40% chance of precipitation, but I could envision and see a scenario where we make it well into not only the upper 60s, maybe even low 70s and are mainly dry on Sunday. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on that. For now, I'm going to stay on the conservative side and just keep it uh, in the mid-60s. But stay tuned at noon. I may make some changes. That's going to come ahead of a cold front. So obviously, if we make it well into the, uh, the upper 60s and low 70s on Sunday, that could mean that we could see thunderstorms on Monday. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. And it looks like we could stay in a somewhat unsettled weather pattern into next week, but there's still a lot of question marks once we get past Monday. And the garbage truck is uh, leaving the station. They have uh, successfully emptied the dumpster. That is can more it take the garbage weather with it? I, I wish. I wish. <laughs> and there it goes. Goodbye. Oh, my. Uh, that is a symbol that it is time <laughs> to wrap up this show, wrap up this week. And we will see you bright and early on Monday morning on GMS. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. Bye, friends.